it's Spurgeon. <laughs> Spurgeoneth. Let's Spurgeoneth it today. Thou knowest why is I speakest this way, if thou knowest that Spurgeoneth speaketh such. <laughs> Help, Lord. The prayer itself is remarkable, for it is short, but seasonable, sensuous, and suggestive. David mourned the fewness of faithful men, and therefore lifted up his heart in supplication. When the creature failed, he flew to the Creator. He evidently felt his own weakness, or he would not have cried for help. But at the same time, he intended honestly to exert himself for the cause of truth. For the word help is inapplicable where we ourselves do nothing. There is much of directness and clearness of perception and distinctness of utterance in this petition of two words. Much more indeed than in the long rambling outpourings of certain professors who pray. The psalmist runs straight forward to his God. With a well-considered prayer, he knows what he is seeking and where to seek it. The Lord teaches to pray in the same blessed manner direct. The occasions for the use of this prayer are frequent. In providential afflictions, how suitable it is for tried believers who find all helpers failing them. Students in doctrinal difficulties may often obtain aid by lifting up this cry of, Help, Lord, to the Holy Spirit, the great teacher. Spiritual warriors in inward conflicts may send to the throne of reinforcements, and this will be a model for their request. Workers in heavenly labor may thus obtain grace in time of need. Seeking sinners in doubts and alarms may offer up the same weighty supplication. In fact, in all cases, times, and places, this will serve the turn of the needy souls. Help, Lord, will suit us living and dying, suffering or laboring, rejoicing or sorrowing. In Him our help is found. Let us not be slack to cry to him. The answer to prayer is certain, if it be sincerely offered to Jesus. The Lord's character assures us that he will not leave his people. His relationship as father and husband guarantees us his aid. His gift of Jesus is a pledge of every good thing, and his sure promise stands, fear not, I will help thee. You know, I smile because if there was ever a person who could have created long-winded and doctrinally correct and spiritually sounding prayers, it would have been Spurgeon. He would have been so articulate in the way that his vernacular and the way that he intonates with his long words and proper Oxford English speaking accents created such a prayer that we would have all said, wow, and ooh, and ah. And yet, the thing that he highlights is the simplest of prayers, help, Lord. And you know, I tell my wife all the time when I pray that, you know, she says, oh, that's such a beautiful prayer, oh, ooh, ah. And I always think to myself before I tell her that, boy, Lord, if she only knew this is more for her than for me, because when I'm talking to you, I just talk normal. <laughs> It's just, Lord, do it. Lord, yes. Lord, no. Help. Pretty simple. I figure that, you know, I don't need to tell God what needs to be done. He already knows, so I just tell him, go do it. You know, it's like, fine, Lord, you know, they, they want a prayer? Good. Okay, Lord, you know, you know what they need. Take care of it. You know what I mean? That's, call me short-winded, but if you've ever heard my elocution and my articulation and the fact that I'm a writer and the fact that I can create poetry as I speak and I think in limerick and rhyme and I have iambic pentameter just flowing sometimes in the midst of a rhyme and in the midst of a sentence with which there might be the consonantal quotes and sing-songish wordish ways that we can make a word sound so important and we can keep running it on into a run-on sentence that lasts for five pages long and if you think God cares, no. <laughs> Not at all. Jesus himself, when he prayed out loud, said, Look, Lord, it's not for me and you, it's for them. <laughs> and if you read it in John and you read it in Matthew, you'll agree. 
So, I like what Spurgeon says in the sense of, help, Lord, is really a universal prayer. We don't have to be too mindful and proudful to say help. We don't have to be so impoverished to recognize we need help. All we need to do is really, when you lack wisdom, ask of God who abradeth not. When you lack anything at all, don't go taking all 16 different ways to figure out God's will or 17 different ways to figure out a scripture for it or try to quote a scripture for it. Just say help. God knows you. God's there. God cares for you. And God wants you to have help because he is a very present help in time of need. And you may not get the help you think you want or need, but God will be there irregardless of what you think or see or feel because God is real. And he is there from the moment before you ever thought to speak, from the instant you ever thought there was a need coming, from long before you ever dreamed that there was a God, he was there to meet you. And you know what? He's just waiting for you to recognize your need. So all you need to do is say, help, Lord. Every day, don't walk away without asking God for help. In every situation, no matter you think you've got it under control, or you think you can handle it on your own, or you think that you committed your way unto him, don't be ashamed or afraid to ask him again, help, Lord. When you least expect it, when you don't know what's coming around the corner, when you have no idea that God is there with you right now, as soon as you say, help, Lord, try this, just between you and I, try saying this. After you say, help, Lord, just as fast as you said that, say thank you. I do.